have some people still having trouble logging in. So we'll do that and we'll get started shortly. In the meantime, for those of you who are attending this session, welcome. If you have some, uh, you can just kind of maybe say in the chat, hi, this is who I am. And if you want to just give a little uh, blurb about if there's a particular certificate of specialization you're interested in or just a fun little tidbit about yourself, please feel free to do that. I know it's a lot to take in at the moment, but we appreciate you being here. All right, and I appreciate this being recorded so it can be available for all others. Ah, okay, great. So we already have some enrolled students like Naomi, who's already in our master's program. Okay, well, we can get started. And thank you again. Welcome everyone to our session on certificates of specializations led by those who are the lead program developers in what we call the COSs. And uh, for those of you who are new to the department, welcome to EPOL. It does stand for Education Policy, Organization, and Leadership. I'm Yoon Pak. I'm the department head of, uh, of EPOL. And my area of specialization is history of American education. But I just also go where my students lead me. So I've been able to learn a lot more over the course of 20 plus years that I've been here. And I want to just give you a little bit of a background on who we are in EPOL. What is our tradition, our history? As a number of you already know, uh, but I would like to emphasize is that we are a very unique department. And that's an important thing to get to understand. We're very unique and we have an emphasis on foundational learning. And foundational learning happens through the expertise that our faculty bring in. We have award-winning, internationally rena renowned faculty and with particular backgrounds uh, in the humanities and the social sciences and also in the sciences. So we have a, a range of expertise at student, uh, that our faculty come from, but you can you can tell that that is delivered through the high quality courses that we offer. And this intentional cross-disciplinary way that we approach our teaching and research is uh, an added benefit to students in terms of online learning. Uh, the other important thing is that we're not new to online teaching. We've been doing this and delivering online teaching for well over 20 years, and it started within our human resource education. So we've learned a lot over uh, the two decades in terms of how do we best approach teaching as well as learning. But it's also to say this is not a be all end all. We're always learning. Right, and we're always wanting to adapt, which is why uh, we are working towards uh, developing a, a nice suite of certificates of specialization. And these were brought because of conversations with alumni, with current students, with other faculty, and just understanding the external uh, factors that reveal in terms of how do we better service all of you for continuous learning. And we really say across the lifespan. And that's what, something we're really serious about because we have faculty who study early childhood and through well into uh, seasoned uh, professionals, let's say. So uh, it's also to say, I, I developed this phrase for us <laughs> this morning, we know online. It doesn't mean we know everything, but we know online. And we have great representatives of our certificates of specializations to tell you why. <laughs> so without further ado, I will hand it over, but welcome. And we look forward to having you in our programs if you're already not in it.
Thank you, Professor Park. Uh, I think we can start um, a little bit about the structure of the certificate of specialization. Uh, as you can see, EPOL offers a, a wide variety of uh, COS programs for students to choose from. These are all non-degree uh, programs. Uh, but if you are interested in incorporating uh, coursework from your COS sequence uh, into your current degree seeking uh, program coursework, uh, we would like to encourage you to discuss these uh, options with your advisors. And uh, once you make the decision to incorporate those coursework, uh, you can file a petition uh, to, well, if you are, so, okay, let me see if I can get this uh, less complicated. If you're a current degree seeking students, uh, you can choose to enroll, to apply into any of this specialization, uh, certificate of specialization. Um, there are specific course sequence uh, per uh, COS program. For instance, uh, HRD has three, um, there's a general certificate uh, other program areas have uh, different combinations. So if you're a current degree seeking student, you can again discuss with advisor incorporating uh, uh, sequences of COS courses, uh, perhaps as your electives in your current uh, degree seeking program and coursework. So that's for degree seeking students. For non-degree seeking student, you can also uh, apply and enroll into any of this uh, of the COS program areas. And if you decide to go with the degree seeking uh, programs in EPO, then you can transfer uh, those credits from the COS into your admitted uh, degree program coursework sequence. So those are um, the general structure of the COS. Uh, if you have any further questions, I believe we have time uh, to, to, to respond to them. Um, so I'm going to uh, shift uh, this to uh, Professor Herman uh, talking about the leadership and equity uh, COS. Professor Herman, I'm gonna stop sharing, I think. Okay. Professor Herman, you're muted. Here we go. So I would like to um, thank you all for being here. I'm excited to share uh, one of our certificate uh, programs that we are excited about starting. Actually, um, we're going to be starting it in the fall. So happy that you're here. Uh, my name is Mary Herman. I'm a clinical associate professor in the education and administrative, um, educational leadership and administration area of EPAW. And I am deeply committed, I guess, to, to leadership in all aspects of of leadership, it's exciting. And I hope that uh, what we believe very strongly is that we need to always enact, um, we have to put into action what we learn from so much of the, the content and the theory. So the Leadership and Equity Certificate of Specialization includes work from my area, which is at a, uh, education administration and leadership, diversity and equity and human resource development. The um, when we when we thought about this and developed this program, we are really concentrating on all sectors because this is important for all sectors. So obviously, uh, most of us are educators, but it goes and it, and it can easily extend beyond the education sector to other nonprofits and other uh, people who may have an interest in this. Um, it is important when we think about this 
in preparing, practicing, and, and aspiring leaders that we continually grow and develop knowledge and skills. So uh, as Dr. Pak talked about, learning is central <laughs> to everything we do. And it is particularly important when we think about being leaders and being effective leaders. So this is a, a key part of, of the, what, we're, what we're talking about here. Uh, it's about strengthening dispositions and building capacity for equity work. We know that equity work is very challenging. It's very difficult and it requires great courage, perseverance, resilience. So our goal is to not only dig deep into what it means to do equity work, but also to strengthen our dispositions and our skills and develop the capacity to do that effectively. We recognize that Effective leadership is about recognizing and taking action that disrupts and dismantles practices that are inequitable and unjust. And this is, so, so everything about this certificate is saying, we need to strengthen our leadership, but we do that from a framework of equity um, and that we lead equity focused transformational change. Some of the highlights of the program we like to think of it as, as being very um, differentiated and that, that anyone who's interested in this can think about it um, very flexibly, work with an advisor in terms of the kinds of, of uh, what, what um, they aspire to do with this program and, and how it might enhance um, either their vita or um, enhance their, uh, their degree or just in fact, um, and then I'll talk about this in just a second, but, it, but also um, providing some very important professional learning kinds of skills and competencies. So there's a lot of significant job embedded learning in this program. It's very action oriented. And um, if you are a student, a current degree seeking student, as I mentioned, it can further enhance your experience and your vita. If you're not, it can serve as a, an in-depth equity focused professional development experience. And this is important because for so many of us who, who work in schools, and I work a lot with uh, interns who are currently working in schools, and I know that their principals and that their superintendents struggle a lot with leading this kind of work. So um, we think of this as being valuable, not only to those of you who are our students, but to others who may have an interest in trying to be more effective in leading equity work. The requirements, 12 credit hours, three courses that are offered online or in person. And I say that because some of these courses are also part of um, the endorsement requirements for our principals or superintendents. So there's the possibility of being able to take these courses in person but we are also committed to having the opportunity to take them online. Uh, students must select a minimum of two courses from the following, the diversity, leadership and policy, organizational theory, and leading improvement and innovation. Students have the option to then choose one other course from seven other uh, potential course options, which includes several from our human resource and development program. Thank you very much for your interest. We are excited that you are here and learning <laughs> along with us as we, as we um, meet this new challenge of offering a new program. And I welcome any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Herman. Uh, any questions at this point for the Leadership and Equity uh, Certificate Specialization Program? Feel free to uh, use the chat box um okay uh now we can move on to the uh, next uh, program area uh professor zamani gallagher uh, would you be able to talk about the community college leadership uh, certificate sure happy to
So we have what is an exciting opportunity within our COS relative to community college uh, leadership. And so to tell you a little bit more about the community college context, uh, this is an ever changing as well as growing area. You know, community colleges have at least 41% of all undergraduate enrollments. We see that there is also the case where we have just under 1,100 institutions nationally, and there's a changing of the guard that's on the cusp of happening as many senior leaders, um, mid-level managers and administrative practitioners, as well as executives are now retiring um, this year and onward. And so we're seeing that there's a ripe opportunity for that changing of the guard relative to community college leadership. So our COS and community college leadership is poised to help individuals who are interested in having an aspiring career as community college practitioners relative to various areas within the two-year landscape. So if it's relative to student services, and student affairs administration, academic affairs, um, issues around facilities management, you name it, there's a little bit of something for everyone as there is a little bit of breadth, as well as some depth that you may be able to tap into within the COS for CCL. There's also coursework that, again, is very much positioning uh, those that take on the COS to be able to bridge theory and practice. Um, and also to understand the nuances of the two-year landscape that are very unique um, from that of their four-year counterparts. The COS and community college leadership is preparing folks that are not just aspiring community college uh, practitioners, but current practicing community college leaders. Um, and many regards we have where individuals who are already embedded within the community college context they may understand and know fully well their own institutional um, histories and the background of the college and or immediate local needs and community with which their institution is situated, but often do, do not have the luxury um, of having had the opportunity to think more fully and broadly beyond their immediate context to understanding the fuller landscape of community college issues of concern, as well as the underpinnings of how the community college uh, sector evolved, its origins, its purpose, its primary functions, its multiple missions. And as such, uh, the, the COS and community college leadership provides individuals with that backdrop in terms of the, the nuances of the context, the unique factors of the, the institutional programs, the students that are served, as well as the, the variation in terms of governance structures, uh, organizational control, budgetary and finance matters, um, you know, and boards of trustees and the like. When we think about the ways in which the COS can be complementary and an enhancement um, for those that, um, again, as a post-baccalaureate certificate or as a specialization within the master's and or doctoral programs, again, this is a program that interfaces with all of our graduate offerings. And so you can engage in topics of interest in terms of current um, you know, areas of interest within community colleges, uh, as well as research related to community college relative to faculty um, issues, governance, diversity, again, internationalization of community colleges. We also get into issues around diversity, equity, and inclusion that are, again, specific to the community college context relative to broadening participation and looking at how students move in to, through, um, and out of community colleges as uh, a primary post-secondary context to further education and or gainful employment. We also look at the issues and with regard to lifelong learning and the continuing ed function, um, the, meeting the needs of local industry and community relative to workforce development, training and development. Some highlights of the program, as you can see, are again, the fact that this interfaces well with our current programs of study in terms of our EDM, the Masters of Education, our Masters of Arts, 
uh, as well as each of our doctoral programs. And any student that is interested in the COS and community college leadership um, can take on our certificate of specialization in this area um, in an online and on campus format. Again, the opportunity to engage in a fuller conversation and have a backdrop and training with respect to this unique sector of the higher education landscape can again be an enhancement to one's skill sets already and knowledge as well as experiential growth and networking capacity. As you can see, there's 12 credit hours. Um, we offer a litany of different courses that one can take um, and they can couple that with our required core. The two required courses are the 558, which is the survey course in community college, as well as the diversity and higher education course that is um, specifically tied to, um, again, exploring issues as they relate to DEI, not just within post-secondary writ large, but um, explicitly within the community college sector. So again, those two courses coupled with an additional course from a long list of offerings from our higher ed program, as well as other EPO uh, concentrations are available for students to pursue to round out their COS program of study. So who should apply? Well, you know, this is open to all degree and non-degree seeking students. And again, if you are someone who is interested in um, a career within the community college sector or already have, um, you know, situated yourself within the two-year context, but are aspiring to move into uh, increasing roles of responsibility and administrative leadership, instructional leadership, um, this is an ideal uh, complement in terms of official training that would provide one with um, more of a competitive edge to understanding and being able to speak to the larger uh, landscape of community college issues and concerns. Thanks so much for your time and your interest. Thank you, Professor Zamani Gallagher. Any questions for this particular uh, certificate of specialization, community college leadership? Okay, uh, feel free again, uh, let us know if you have any questions about the offering. Uh, let's move on to the uh, next one, uh, Professor Witt. Sure, let me just share my screen here with you. Can everyone see that okay? I hope that's a yes, I'm not able to see the chat. So um, I wanna talk briefly about the um, International Education Administration and Leadership Track, IEAL, we affectionately call it. Um, first of all, I put some nice splashy pictures on here. Um, these are not places that we go, so. <laughs> Just a little disclaimer, it's a little bit of false advertising, but I thought we all needed um, something cheerful today and, and something warm and sort of an escape. So, so I indulged a little bit in um, wishful thinking. <laughs> um, but this track is especially for um, um, folks who really want to add an international component um, to their expertise and want to be able to work in, a, in an environment that requires a certain amount of um, international experience or training. Um, so it's really to, we really try to help you um, tailor the other coursework that you're doing to add this international uh, expertise. So our typical um, coursework, it's, it's sort of funny to say typical because I think every single student does um, very different things. So to say typical is, is uh, not really accurate. Um, each student takes exactly the courses uh, that they think will add what they need in order to pursue the positions they want to do. So just to give you some ideas, um, a lot of students in this program are working to become study abroad directors or work in study abroad um, at some level in higher education or perhaps with a provider, a study abroad provider. We also have a lot of um, students in the program who are interested in working 
um, you know, maybe they work at the K-12 level, but they, um, you know, guide students abroad or they do um, programming that has an international component. Um, we also have students that work in higher education taking care of um, international students and helping with that student mobility. So there's definitely a strain of, of student mobility um, embedded within it, but um, you can sort of tailor the, the um, the coursework to exactly what sort of skills and interests that you have. So I would normally inc include or, or encourage students to include um, some kind of internship. Now, this is great because um, we have the U of I campus, uh, which you know, is really international and well known for its global connections. So we can connect you with opportunities within that environment. But we are also thinking more and more about um, working with part with other partners too. So for example, if you're not um, able to do something online with the University of Illinois um, internship, you could certainly do something locally to one of your local institutions and, and we can help you arrange and, and organize that. So that's something um, that I think provides an, a missing piece. Um, I have a couple of students doing this now who are using these, these internship courses to really fill in the one thing that's been missing from their experience um, that's keeping them from moving up in their career. And so I think it can be uh, really useful in that way to sort of fill in those gaps and get that expert um, expertise. Um, related to that, it helps you to get this um, network of other professionals that are doing the work that you are either doing or that you want to be doing. <laughs> so you can um, have those experts to draw on for references, but also for support and advice and cluing you into opportunities too. Um, now, the other thing, and, and this is what the pictures are supposed to inspire uh, for all of us, is we do have study abroad. This is true in this track, but it's true for all of the programs that we're talking about today. It's very unusual at the graduate level to have study abroad. In our College of Education, we actually developed these, again, going way back um, to, I, I believe it was the late 90s when we started doing study abroad at the graduate level. And the idea is really, you know, it's not the um, undergraduate go, um, you know, play somewhere abroad. It's um, much more intense and much more focused on exactly developing those international facets of your career that you want to. And also, again, developing your global network so that you have people around the world that you're working with and that can support you as you um, go forward in your career. Now, um, you know, again, with this international piece, we do it in a very short term way. So we're, we're talking about um, one week or two weeks because, you know, most of us are grown ups and we can't just, you know, jet off to somewhere, um, you know, <laughs> and be gone for, for a whole semester, much as we might like to. So instead, it's a, it's a much shorter sort of um, commitment. Uh, one week or um, two weeks, and you do get um, graduate level credit, and it's it's intense. You know, it's not just um, travel abroad and have fun as much as these pictures look fun. Again, it's uh, really doing work and um, you know, uh, learning and exploring. So I would say just overall, um, this this track is to help you add those international dimensions to your training. Um, to prepare you for any um, positions that you have that you want to that you aspire to that would require some um, international expertise and to help you really hone in and develop um, exactly what you want to do in your career using the full global um, network reach and resources of the University of Illinois. So any questions. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see the chat. And I'm also going to post my email. So if you have any questions later or just want to talk individually about your, your own situation, don't hesitate to, to reach out.
Oh, yes, Lisa, great question. So our study abroad options are listed, but you know, of course, right now, none of us can go anywhere. <laughs> killing me. Um, but, but as soon as we can, we will. And so you can take a look at the website to get an idea of the places we've gone in the past. But stay tuned because we will be updating that um, with all of our upcoming programs. And they're uh, really exciting. We, you know, because we can't travel, we're really diving into planning some new, some new places and some new adventures. So get ready. <laughs> get your passport updated. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Witt. Uh, again, feel free to share with us your questions and we'll circle back once we hear from all the uh, faculty representatives of the certificates and if you have additional questions. Uh, next one, we'd like to invite Professor O to talk about uh, the COS programs affiliated with uh, HRD. Morning, everyone. So great to see you. Uh, my name is Njong Graysel. I'm one of the faculty members in EPAL, uh, also a program lead in uh, human resource uh, development concentration. Um, today, I would like to introduce uh, designing learning systems in the workplace. I trust that you can see my uh, the web browser, <laughs> the web page showing the, uh, actually this is a uh, HRD designing learning systems in the workplace. Uh, this particular uh, COS will soon be soon to have a, a new name, which is Instructional System Design Management and Leadership. Uh, and we launched this particular uh, COS, uh, I think last, last year. Um, there is some description regarding the program, but this is basically for um, any students who want to learn more about instructional system design and learning technology integration in the workplace settings and organizational uh, context. So basically, if you actually click this, this one, you will see the next page, which shows some uh, the coursework. Um, so through various courses, basically students will learn about uh, foundations and applications of designing uh, not only traditional, but also tr technology enriched and enabled learning uh, systems for uh, meeting learning and also performance goals of your target learners in uh, various workplace contexts. Um, and this particular uh, COS will be helpful for those of you who are uh, interested in careers such as instructional designers, uh, learning and development specialist or training and development specialist and so forth. Um, and as far as I recall in my own experience in this field, um, instructional design job market has been always pretty, you know, active. But since the pandemic, as universities and all the organizations have to move their learning and training in you know, programs to online, um, I think uh, instructional design particularly has been gaining much, much attention. So I think the special, this particular COS is pretty timely. Uh, one uniqueness and strength of this uh, program is that it's not only helpful for students who are relatively new to the instructional design field, uh, but also uh, this is a great for those who have some experiences in instructional system design and who are interested in moving into uh, managerial roles uh, in really the leading the managing the instructional uh, system design projects and teams. So as you can see from the web page, um, the COS program requires uh, achieving the 16, completing 16 credit hours, which is, you know, which are four uh, courses. So the first two courses, instructional and training system design and learning technologies, those are both are required. Those are kind of really the foundational pieces that students need to uh, complete um, um, pursuing this particular uh, COS. There are two other categories that students can choose. Um, those are basically um, the courses from HRD concentrations to help students to learn about the managing, you know, projects, um, understanding more about the e-learning, online, uh, you know, um, and distance um, educations, 
Also other, other aspects such as consulting, learning on the job and evaluating um, the, the instruct, evaluating the programs, the training programs and learning programs. Uh, with the, the new title, Instructional System Design Management and Leadership, uh, there will be one more course will be added in this category, which will help students understanding about the overall organizational uh, development. So it will be the OD course, so uh, organizational uh, development. So uh, two courses here and one of either project management or int introduction to e-learning and adding OD here. So taking one, so students will be able to uh, uh, complete this particular um, certificate of specialization. Uh, a lot of these courses, especially these two courses are offered every semester. Also the program evaluation course, those three are really, really popular courses. Other courses, um, we either offer every year or at least um, every other year. So um, maybe these two, we might offer every other year, but at least these two courses and also ODs offered every year. So it's, it's, it's relatively um, short term if students wants to uh, complete uh, this particular uh, uh, special a certificate of specialization. <laughs> so uh, that's all I have uh, regarding this particular uh, program. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. I will also leave my email address in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Professor O. Uh, as Professor O mentioned, uh, we're gonna change the name of the certificate of specialization to Instructional System Design Management and Leadership. Um, in the meantime, uh, I wanna, sorry about my camera, it's not working all of a sudden, but voice is fine. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I like to touch on the uh, MTC uh, Master Trust Certificate that we are offering uh, in collaboration with uh, Coursera. Uh, I'm also going to share my screen right here. So if you can go to the ePOL, if you can Google ePOL, uh, UIUC program, and it should be relatively easy to go to this page. Uh, if you check ePOL in terms of department and you check certificate specialization in terms of other objective, you get another full list. We still have the uh, leadership and equity COS to become online in the fall, uh, but this is a, a good list to, to begin. And we talked about the community college leadership program the DLSW changing to ISD ML program. Um, I'm going to the Instructional Design Master Trap program. Click on it and go to the certificate of uh, MTC. So these are only two courses, uh, Instructional Senior Design and Learning Technologies. Uh, we offer the same courses to our degree seeking and non-degree seeking students. Um, as you can see, the coursework uh, is uh, overlapped uh, with uh, the certificate of specialization Professor O just mentioned. The foundation part of it will be designing learning systems with the enrichment and enhancement of learning technology. So that's something I like to bring your attention to. Uh, let's see, we also have uh, perhaps representative faculty to talk about the diversity and equity certificate. If Professor Park can mention that a little bit or we can share the course information. Sure, uh, if I could ask you to go to that part of the website. There we Thank go. You very much. All right. So, our diversity and equity certificate uh, of specialization, I think it, well, 
what it does is that we provide um, those who are enrolled in the program. And as I mentioned before, it's important foundational understandings. Uh, what, do, what do we even mean when we talk about diversity and equity? So we really get down to uh, an understanding through the research, but also how have these concepts changed over the course of time. And we find this is particularly useful, not only for those who are in education, um, but those who are in the workforce, because those might be defined differently in those areas, um, but how might we approach it in a way that for what we're finding for students who are enrolled in our diversity and equity concentration areas is that, um, not only do they want to understand, they want to be change agents where they're at. So this is what the certificate is very useful to offer. And so there's that grounded foundational understanding that already enhances where they are professionally. But for those of you who are interested in gaining that foundational knowledge to then seek positions uh, that have DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion areas within it, this this gives you that important um, uh, uh, groundedness of knowledge uh, on it. But at the same time, it's highly flexible. And this is something the other um, professors have mentioned. It's incredibly flexible because then you can add on to other uh, certificates of specialization so that it enhances and it complements the work that you're wanting to do. But you can do it standalone as a certificate of specialization, add on to it, um, think about what it would mean to uh, continue in graduate studies with it. So there's ways in which that um, through uh, our, let's say, interrogation of systems of structure and uh, histories of structural inequities, um, it's also built towards the practical applications of what you've learned. So that's in a nutshell what we provide in the courses that we offer. And the reason why we emphasize the core course in historical and social barriers is really if we don't have a, uh, an understanding of where we've been, especially in the ways that so many of us and even those who've experienced um, schooling in an international framework, there's still systems of inequality that we have yet to make explicit. So we start first and foremost with that core course, but yet um, selecting amongst uh, the core courses that we have available that um, you can also pursue. Thank you, Professor Park. Uh, I'm looking at the list of COS EPO offers. Uh, one less, not, not the, well, uh, they are certificates of specialization offered by the learning design and leadership, uh, concentration. If you have questions about those, uh, certificates of specialization, uh, you can contact, uh, Professor Bill Cope, uh, who is uh, coordinating those program areas. Uh, one, more uh, COS, speaking of timely uh, program development, uh, EPOL started to offer uh, the COS in online teaching in higher education environment. I'm going to again go back to the program development uh, part of it. Uh, it's right here. So this was uh, developed last year uh, during, still we are in the middle of the pandemic to address increasing needs for higher ed uh, colleagues to uh, transfer their instructional uh, deliveries and practices from face-to-face -face setting. Uh, in addition to face-to-face -face settings, uh, uh, transferring those uh, practice into, again, uh, technology enrich enable learning environments. Uh, I'm going into those course lists for your information. 
This COS uh, requires uh, 16 hours for courses, uh, as you can see, with uh, emphasis on designing learning systems with technological capabilities, uh, college teaching in the context of higher education. And finally, we have the uh, concluding course, understanding the overall landscape of e-learning uh, around the world. So those are the courses for the OTHEE, uh, Online Teaching in Higher Education Environment uh, Certificate of Specialization. Um, feel free to uh, send me questions if you're interested in pursuing uh, this particular certificate and also uh, other certificates. I see a chat box. There is a question about HRD. Okay, I'm going back to the HRD uh, certificate to show a uh, course list. For well, the HRD uh, certificate of specialization, 12 credit hours, uh, you can select from three, uh, three courses from the, the list of courses now you see uh, on the shared uh, screen. Um, again, for degree seeking students, those courses and all the certificates of specialization courses we have covered, uh, I would say there were good candidates to meet your elective course need if you are not in the uh, home concentration uh, that offers the certificate specialization. Uh, again, discussions with your advisor uh, will be a great starting point to incorporate different courses uh, from different certificate specialization into your degree seeking uh, program curriculum. For those of you who are not uh, in our degree programs yet, uh, you can take these courses per uh, certificate of specialization of your interest and transfer them to degree seeking uh, coursework uh, once you are admitted. I'll stop here and open the floor for questions. Uh, feel free to use your mic or type in the chat box. I see Naomi has a question. Go ahead. Hi. Yeah, I've had a few questions. Um, is What's the difference between the certificate of specialization and the endorsements? That's a, well, I'll try. Uh, uh, certificate specialization within the context of EPO uh, we covered today, they are non-degree programs and offered by uh, the EPO faculty. Endorsement, especially if you're referring to the one offered by LDL, uh, usually the, those types of coursework needs to be approved by the Illinois State Board of Education, ISB. And that's another layer. Uh, I think one example will be the LDL uh, technology specialist endorsement. My understanding uh, is that uh, students can go ahead and take that endorsement if they already have a license for teaching in the state of Illinois, right? So the students will in-service teachers they want to move up to the instruction technology part of the practice within the school districts or within the building. They can take those technology specialist endorsement uh, to be qualified for those type of opportunities. That's for in-service teachers in the state of Illinois. If you are not in the state of Illinois, you can still take those coursework and you will get a, a badge, if you will, uh, to, to list on your CV or resume. Uh, but I don't think you'll be able to take the full advantage of the endorsement uh, if you're out of state of Illinois. That's my understanding. Okay, thank you. And so if, if since I am a current degree seeking student, getting a certificate of specialization would sort of be like getting a minor. Is that, am I understanding that correct? 
like it's I'm, I'm I'm doing equity and diversity, but then if I wanted to do global studies and education certificate of specialization, it's almost like just a little minor tag on or the certificate of specialization is not a graduate minor. It's a non-degree option. Uh, it will not show on your transcript. So right now you're in a diversity equity and your transcript, once you're done with the coursework and all the other things you need to do, you, you get to see that on your transcript, diversity equity in education. But if you take the uh, COS from GSC, uh, that will not be on your transcript, but you can list on your uh, CV or resume. We'll also uh, print and send you a nice hard copy of certificate. Great, and if I, since I am already a current degree seeking student, is there a separate application process if I want to pursue a certificate or am I already in and I'm good to go? Right now it's, uh, I would say, if you're interested, you can talk to Professor Witt uh, or your advisor informing them that, oh, you're doing this. Of course, you need to, uh, to discuss it with your uh, advisor in DNE, and you can start planning your coursework uh, within uh, your DNE uh, course plan, right? We don't want you to, ideally, we don't want you to stay longer, but if you wish to 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 see us for a longer time, no, that would be great. But yeah, right now there is no specific uh, application process. Mostly, I think, in my opinion, most importantly, you need to inform, uh, discuss your your plan with your advisor and uh, program leaders. Uh, they are here today. Thank you so much. No problem. Just to add to what David said, Naomi, you really want to be strategic, and so I think what David's saying is you don't want you. You, if you can double dip, you should. So if you can satisfy your current uh, degree requirements and also get the certificate, you should. So, and maybe there's not a way to do that, but at least you would explore that first. Uh, Naomi, just to, just to follow up, um, if you wanna talk about that, um, adding that global studies one, I'd be happy to meet with you and kind of figure out how we can make it happen without a lot of extra time or maybe no extra time. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions we can respond to at this point? Looks like there's a question in the chat. Yes, Jennifer has a question. The process of continuing education from the COS into a degree program, is this difficult? Uh, I will respond to that first, uh, Professor Witt, feel free to jump in. I think it's, uh, it's one of the, our primary reasons when designing and developing the COS. Ideally, students would, 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 would choose uh, from our, I would say, very diverse collection of programs, the COS, and taking courses and testing water, so to speak and help the students decide if they want to go after specific concentration areas such as diversity and uh, equity education, such as GSE, HRD, uh, higher education, uh, EAL, and LDL. Am I missing anyone? Trying to, not to miss, miss anyone. Uh, right, so once you're admitted to degree seeking program, um, then you can transfer those credits. I think those COS for non-degree seeking students yet, uh, it's a great opportunity for you to get to know uh, who we are, what we do, and faculty who are teaching those courses. I hope that answers your question. The, the petition to transfer credits uh, is very easy to do. Jennifer? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I apologize if some of this has already been spoken about. Um, I was in a meeting earlier but I'm actually looking at the community college leadership COS and then, um, but taking that through your online option and then looking at potentially moving that into a degree area moving forward. So should I contact somebody specific to talk about that in details outside of this meeting? And if so, who should I reach out to? Hi, Jennifer. Uh, it's Ebony Zamani Gallagher. 
And um, I'm happy to meet with you outside of this meeting so that we can talk about uh, a plan of study for you that would incorporate um, the COS and CCL and then moving that into a degree option. Thank you, thank you very much. I'll put my uh, contact information in the chat for you, okay? And then we can get some set up. Thank you. All right, I see a hand up from Melissa and a question in the chat box from EB about EDD. Let's go with Melissa first. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for doing this. This is really informational. Um, I am currently a uh, degree seeking student for the diversity and equity in education EDD program. Um, but I'm also looking to do a COS in either the community college leadership or the human resource development. Um, and I was just kind of curious, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding this correctly, that um, if I am a degree seeking student, I can overlap some of these classes. Um, so if something seems very similar in some of those certificate programs, I can take some of those to get both at the same time. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> I think yes, that's all you I can have. certainly do that. Thank you, Melissa. And to uh, EB's question. I'm sorry, I don't know your first name, but uh, the typical career, Ellen, all right, thanks, Ellen, for your question. Typically, who we have in our EDD online uh, program, it ranges from K, K through 12 professionals, nonprofit, um, uh, corporate, um, human resource professionals, not always, but typically, as well as those who work in higher education across the range of higher education administration, student affairs, some of them academic affairs. We have those uh, community college administrators actually, um, who are deans, vice presidents, and who are wanting to not only skill what they already uh, have, but also obviously earn a doctorate that uh, what we call the, um, uh, the scholar practitioner route. And uh, the other uh, ways in which the career options are uh, that our students in the EDD um, online and diversity and equity are seeking is to also serve as consultants and to serve to develop their own diversity, equity, inclusion training programs. So we have also entrepreneurial um, individuals who through their experiences in DEI workshops are thinking, oh my goodness, there's like a lot more that should be done. And so what they've been able to do and some of our courses, we uh, encourage what would a DEI training program look like if you were to incorporate this and implement this within your area that not only are you in or what you would like and you're aspiring to go into. So there's a great deal of range within that. I don't know if that helps to answer your question, Ellen. Yes, thank you very much. That did answer my question. Is it possible for me to get your email address? Sure, I will type it here. Thank you. Sure. All right, I'd like to uh, be sensitive about the time. Uh, only one minute left. Uh, I think we can wrap up the session. I want to thank all of the students or students-to-be joining us. Uh, actually, this is a great opportunity for us to get together to talk about the, the programs. I want to thank all the faculty members uh, out of their busy schedule to share their perspectives and their uh, passion with us and with the participants uh, through the development of the COS programs. Finally, I want to thank the online program office, Sangeeta, to sponsor the event. Um, and the recording will be available uh, for you to review the content. And I think we are at time right now. Again, thank you all. And feel free to contact any of us if you have any further questions. Thank you. And have a good day. <laughs>